we were on our own, of course, in the middle of the, and we were on the, this target trying to draw to all the, the Americans, the uh, Germans, and this uh, big one which must have caught on to me, and I, I was just trying to get out of it, and then, uh, but he opened. You can't really go on and stand up there and fight. They were straight out fighters, and uh, they got on the tail there and put it out of control. That was. I read that. Read in the book, and it just wasn't bungling on. I, I, I said I said my prayers. Like I'd only been married a few weeks, and. Uh, I could see what was happening. This spider was coming in very high, highly armed, evidently, and uh, it started fighting them. Maybe, you know, we were getting hit, I was in crooked, the thing had caught fire, and a couple of my crew were walking down, and they were on fire, and yeah, you see, and there's nothing, we couldn't fight much against them. And I just said prayers, you know, when things get to the point, you, you, you think of all this, you think of, oh, I, I, as I said in the book, and it's, it's true, it's not, not just a point. I just realised I was, a couple of my crew were on fire, and they were screaming, there's not nothing I could do, and the next thing would probably be me too, and, and you, so. Say all your prayers. And, well, I hoped Olin wouldn't take it too bad, and some be young. But as I said, my my mid up got gunner. He he was a Scotch boy, and we we'd had about a fortnight leave, and he just got married. He took his time at that time up in Scotland. He got married. He come back that afternoon. He killed that night. Poor as lad. I was still sitting at the controls there. And, that she just caught fire. She must have just exploded in the end. Because my own gunners were, they went, they went and left. But I was up, I forget how high it was, we put well up to height. We weren't right down near the ground when this happened. I was up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't. I tried to get out, I couldn't get out, I couldn't get through the air. The windows, you know, all the others just shut down. Anyway. In the end, it just blew up. Amazing, it's as I say, it's... I'm an unlucky day on one way, but it's very lucky that I'm here now. So. Isn't it? A top hatch, you can get out, get out an emergency. So. But you're not supposed to do that because everything's you got the, the rain. You go out of that window, and especially with the Lancasters and those, they got two trail trail toilets. So if you, if you go out there, and you go out that window, you're out the top, and you get blown back. If you get hit the rudder, you're in big trouble too. But I did trying to get out there, I don't know whether I did or not, whether I got out or where I got out, I don't know where it came out. But you get that way, it's, I was going to say it's funny, but it's not really, but the whole life, but it's, your life, you'll take anybody to way to get out. Yeah. But I still don't know how, how it blew up or what, although I was conch, conscious practically to it all, and, I think I realised some of that early stage there when I said I sort of realised if I'm going to get I'm going to get, if I can get out of here that's the only way I'm going to so I better put my parachute on because the pilot you, know, you do all sorts of tricks well, the pilot's cockpit I can show you all the control and all there but your know, parachute takes up a fair bit of room you wear it all the time you can't go and 
like I'd put it on nicely. But the pilots usually, along with the, your pilot here, you know, all your controls here, but on the size of the lock where you can lock your, your motor so the vibration changes, I used to, I used to put my, my bloody parachute alongside on that control thing where it had all the throttles and and you used to have a thing on the side where I could lock my throttle. No, control, no. But I had it all locked there. And when I realised what was going on there, I took it on, I put it on. I said, I don't know, because I'm going to get out of here somewhere or other. And if I get out, I'm going to have a parachute. So I was just coming out in the middle of the sky up to a fair, I don't know, or, or, say 20,000 feet or something. It's a bloody long way down. But somehow, I don't know how I really did give out. I think I must have got out through that window in the end. Because you know, I say it sort of blew up because I don't really know. It, it wasn't just a walk out. Something must have blown. I think something in there said, thinks that maybe the Germans come in because they're, that they reckon the one that, Goddess is one of the good one against the bombers, and uh, he probably had he had most big twenty millimeter cannons. He probably blasted something, or something went off. He got well, he must have got bad. Anyway, bloody miracle, really, because I I, was, I know I was battling there, and I thought, you know, this looks like this is the end. And I didn't write that thing in the think it was, seems a bit silly now, but I remember I, was, I sort of realised this this looks like the end of it. I was more of a seven bloody prayer. I hope I'll end. We went out every about a week or two and uh, hoped everybody would have come through on it. Next thing I knew I was up at 30,000 feet or something and uh, Falling through the bloody sky, the parach parachute was there. I remember it didn't take too long to pull the cord, but I felt the cords come out. And, well, then I was in the middle of the Germany. You didn't know where the hell you were going to land. And, uh, but I come to as anybody who flies will tell you, you know, to come down the middle of a forest here is one of the worst things a parachute can do because. See, I, I sort of think it's meant to be lucky than rich. <laughs> I don't know. But you know, if you hook up, and this was half past three in the morning, pitch dark, and uh, if you hook up in a high tree, somehow or other you're going to get out of that, then get down from the height of the tree, and uh, something was lucky. That I did get through and hit the ground, but I, I did this this foot. I still got a bit of allowance on that one because it's still played up down there. I thought it, I thought it was only sprained, or but it did some little bit of damage to that ankle because you didn't have. Well, you imagine that time in the morning, half past three, and not how dark it was. Anyway. You got in the middle of a forest too, you don't know where the hell you're going to hit it. You hit a tree and I hit the ground and I came out all right. And I always thought then that uh, I'm going to walk to Switzerland. It was about 60 miles, which I probably never would have made at any rate. But I thought, uh, because there was a, that's another thing that came in at the end of the war there that it was known the Germans used to. Uh, if they catch you early, they shoot you and get rid of you. Know, you they don't want to fiddle around with a prisoner of war. Um, all these things go through your mind. And, yeah. I walked into this village and I was quite happy. I walked into these people with nice normal, normal German country people. There's a group of three or four people we're outside this little house because you can see where our plane was 
this whole plug over there, and they'd be down having to look at that evidently. And, but they, but that's another thing that, that sort of strikes you in the eye. I, but they took me inside, and the lady she was going, <gasps> oh, she was just so sorry because I looked a mess. There's, all my hair was burnt off, and everything. But the little kids all come in to see, just like any kids anywhere would. They see this bloody enemy person in the ear, he's shot to sit in the chair, and the kids, you know, look at them, you realise it's just ordinary, ordinary people, but the, you wonder, what, what are you really. I suppose we all get to a stage where someone's got to do something about trying to stop it, but it's bloody terrible. I mean, a lot of innocent people who haven't done anything wrong probably just doing because it's expected of them to do it. A couple of men came in, must have been something to do with the hospital. But they they pulled up a horse and cart, you know, just an ordinary cart. And, and uh, but they, they brought me uh, like a blanket thing you put over you and you, on the cold. Because it was half past three in the morning, it was pretty damn cold. And I, as I realised I was burnt, just to put them, keep the wind off my face because of the burns and whatnot. This is this, this, this sort of thing. It's in the middle of the they're killing people all west and crooked, but you still get the people. But not everybody just doesn't feel like, oh, we're just shooting because he's the bloody enemy. It wasn't that way at all. They took me, and they took me to a hospital, which was it was this place was actually the Germans were using as the German hospital for their own forces, and of course the American advance was coming through because, as I said, the night before there, they they were starting to have a good go at one another there. Our aircraft were coming down and firing at something off the ground and then the bloody cannons were getting more and more firing. And that's what got me scared. I, I said to them, look, if they, don't, if they start opening this up, you know what the, know what the bloody Americans are, they just flatten a lot of them, yeah, but they take it. But it didn't come to that. But, uh, but I think they picked me up with this horse and cart and two fellas come out, they stood in up me, the young fellas, and pulled the seat like this because I couldn't walk. <laughs> they just carried me out to the horse and cart and put the thing to keep the wind off of me and whisked me off to this hospital because you didn't know whether you, you, you know, when you were bloody alive. That was, but I went to the hospital, they took me out, and the German doctor came out. And this is another thing that really makes you flat. This changed the different war things. He spoke better than English than I could, which evidently he'd done a lot of training in England before the war, and uh, well, he looked after me, and, and from there on, it was only about Oh, about a week and a half, I suppose, and first the advance of the Americans came through. Captain American come in with his, with one of his lower races and he said, I'm alive, you're a lousy. Well, I said, he said, we'll get down. He said, my bloody heart. I said, that'll be. <laughs> so he said, right, but if you can't get out straight away, we'll have to get the ambulance, get out tomorrow, and take it back out through. And, uh, but mainly, mainly that point, but then mainly I, I was burnt. In the face and uh, in the head. But that was not, there's no... Uh, I wonder what the Americans did get me through. They, they put me, put different stuff over me, put all over me, which treatment probably worked pretty well with it. Thing I'd like if I can get back over there for a trip because now what's happening is uh, a lot of this, like this is our, our aircraft, our own section of the 
they go over you know, nearly every year you know, and, and, uh, to some of these areas who were the enemies and uh, celebrate the Christmas and all this sort of things amongst you know, some of the cards we get down through from now. And so it's sort of loosened up, I think, at least they're, because they did very reasonably good to me. Now, I don't think they, I don't think and on that, they just thought they could not be so suiting into it. He's not going to do us any harm now. Why the really waste a bloody woman? But, but, uh, but I'd like to go back to have a look at it again. And I'd like to see some of the people that treated me.